Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, or welcome back. Uh, if you enjoy the hobby of FPV, drones, flying, building, tinkering, trying out new things, uh, then you're in the right place because I love those things too, and that's what this channel is about, whatever I find interesting in FPV at the moment. And it has been a few weeks since I've talked to you or told you anything about HD Zero in particular, but today I'm excited because I've got four different pieces of news and some things that I wanna show you that I'm really excited about uh, and I think you'll be interested to see. The first of them is this new video receiver module. This goes on your goggles so that you can receive HD Zero. Uh, originally they had the Shark Bite module uh, sold by Fat Shark and that has been sold out forever. So if you've been looking for one and you haven't been able to get into HD Zero, uh, I'm happy to tell you that these will be out soon. You can actually pre-order them right now and there's links in the video description. Um, but they will ship out from HD Zero to resellers first week of May. So that is coming up pretty soon and I wanted to make sure you guys knew about that. Although I'm not gonna talk about this too much uh, today. If you have some questions, you can leave them down in the comments below, but there's some other stuff I wanna show you today, including this guy right here. This is the final version of the 1S video transmitter for HD Zero. And I'm really excited about this because it's gonna make it possible to build uh, lighter and smaller builds with digital FPV. It's gonna make digital FPV accessible to more and more of our tiny little builds, um, which digital hasn't really been practical for in the past. And the real blocker has been having uh, one cell voltage. Now, if you've been following my channel, you've been hearing about 1S for a while, or you've heard about from other people. Uh, maybe you saw this build that I did with a prototype of the board. This is super cool, but this was a prototype that nobody else could get. So I'm happy to tell you that this is the final version and it will also be coming out soon. And there's one more thing that goes with it that I'm also excited to show you, which is a tiny camera. Now, if you've been following this channel, you already saw that I made my own camera for this build. I made a custom body, put a different lens on it so that I could shave even more weight. This is the lightest HD zero camera anywhere at the time. And now I'm excited to tell you that uh, Runcam has followed up. They have an actual productized version. This has actually a bigger sensor in it. This is the sensor from the um, HD zero micro V2, which means it can do four by three or 16 by nine. That's a great option to have. But the main thing you're gonna see is look at that tiny lens in this thin body. This is amazingly light. And I wanna tell you more about this. We're gonna take a close look at this in just a second. But before we do that, I said there were four things. The fourth thing is just an announcement, not something that I can show you, but I'm really excited about this. Uh, Carl from HD zero just announced on Facebook that he actually plans to take the software or firmware for HD Zero and make it open source. And that is super exciting news for the community. I can't think of sort of a bigger announcement in recent past for the community. He specifically called out uh, the Betaflight group uh, and Express LRS as being just great examples of what the community can do when the community just takes it and drives it make sure that it meets the needs of the community and even innovate and do new things. And that's what he wants for HD Zero and for this hobby. That is awesome. Thank you, Carl, for doing that. Uh, basically, all of the firmware that runs on the video transmitter or on the receiver in the future is gonna be open source, and I am excited about that. What HD Zero and what Carl wants to focus on is the actual chips, the ASICs. That will still be proprietary, but anyone can buy those and put them into different products uh, and combine them with the open source software. That's going to be really exciting. It's going to be a big step towards making HD zero more of like an open standard for this hobby. So big thanks to Carl from HD zero. Now let me show you on the bench uh, these new components up close. All right, let's start with the video transmitter and I'll hold it real close so you can see all of the details. And I just want to say right off the bat, it's super cool to me to be able to finally have this in my hand because I was actually able to give some input on the design of this product uh, based on my testing of the prototype. I'm sure other pilots gave input as well, but at least this exterior shape was definitely my contribution. I actually made a 3D model and I printed it so that I could test fit in different frames uh, to make sure that it would work before I recommended it to Carl. And the fact that he used it in the final design is just really cool to me. So there's a few things I wanna point out about the design. First, you'll see that the sides are notched in and that saves weight on the PCB, obviously, but it's also gonna help it to fit into various frames. The easiest way to mount the video transmitter is probably to stack it 
on top of the flight controller. And that's what they did in this build. This is the 75 millimeter HD Zero Bind and Fly. Uh, Happy Model sells this. And if you're looking for a two or three S Whoop, this is a great option. And you can see how it's mounted there. But when I made this 1S build, which you might have seen on my channel, I wanted to go for a super low profile look. I wanted to make it look as much like a regular 1S as possible and keep the camera down low. So I actually mounted the video transmitter right where the flight controller would normally go. And then the flight controller is on the bottom. And you can see I had to cut away some of the material on the hoops in order to make this prototype VTX fit, but not so with the final version. The frame that I used on this build is actually an older one. It's the Beta 65 Pro version 3 frame. It's the frame Beta FPV made before they made the Meteor 65. And I chose it because it had extra room on the bottom for mounting the flight controller under there. And it's just extra durable. So that's why I chose this one, but I had to modify it. And now you can see I've got another copy of it here, just an old frame. But if I put the VTX in, you can see it fits perfectly with no modification to the frame. Now they don't make these particular frames anymore, but if you wanted to use one, uh, Jesse Perkins from tinywoop.com, he actually found a whole bunch of these in the back room and he's selling them now on tinywoop.com. So I'll put a link down in the video description if you wanted to use this exact frame. You could also use a frame like they use on the Mobula 6. You can see an example of that here. Although this time you would have to turn the flight controller so the USB is on the side and either way you'd have to direct solder the motor. So mounting on top is not the easiest way to build, but it gives a really low profile and I know a lot of people like that option. So you can see it fitting in this frame. It is possible to put it in the Meteor 65 frame, although I did have to modify it slightly in this case, these posts right here and here have to be cut away ever so slightly to make it fit. But I don't think people are gonna use this frame uh, because there isn't room underneath for a flight controller. It'll just hit these supports from the battery tray and there's kind of no way around it. So if you have the Meteor 65 frame, you're gonna end up stacking. So you'll probably put the flight controller and then the VTX. And of course, it's gonna be easy to mount in the larger 75 and 85 millimeter frames. So if you wanna build a Shutterbug 85 with this, it should be a perfect fit. The original HD Zero Whoop board had perforated corners that were designed to break off if you wanted to. This one does not because some people had those break off on accident when they didn't want to, especially in toothpicks and that kind of thing. The holes in the corners are large enough for a silicon grommet. You can use an M2 grommet or the kind like this that you would use elsewhere on a Whoop. And that's another durability feature. Uh, this board is thinner than before. I'll get the thickness in just a minute. Uh, but if you were in a hard crash and it was to flex the board, that could obviously damage the surface components. So soft mounting it is just another way to help protect it. Um, it's up to you if you wanna do that. Uh, inside of a Whoop frame, it's probably gonna be pretty well protected, uh, but it's up to you. Now, if you're wondering about these gaps on the end, that is a convenience feature that I suggested. It's designed so that you can easily insert the gummies just like that without any tool. A few other features of the board, you can see the UFL connector is here and there's little gaps on the side. That's so that you can use a twist tie or a really skinny zip tie and you can help hold that UFL connector on. It's a nice option. Over here, you can see the regular connection, same as the old Whoop board, except there's an additional smart audio wire here. So if you wanna hook up smart audio, that's just another way that you can control all of your settings uh, through Betaflight. And then this over here is not the little joystick connector that was on the original board, although it's the same size. This is actually the firmware update connector. It was made smaller compared to this giant thing that we're used to seeing. And so that is great. And there is no longer a joystick connector because you don't need it. You can do everything through uh, your radio. To use this, you are gonna need a cable and it should come with one that looks like this. One end goes into your goggles, uh, the VRX, and the other goes to the VTX right here. So be sure you don't lose this connector. Here's the back side if you wanna see that. It says HD Zero Whoop Lite on mine. Uh, I can see that this one was hand soldered in several places. so. The final ones will probably look a little bit cleaner, but it'll be this same basic layout. The weight without any wires or grommets comes in at 4.5 grams, which is awesome. The thickness appears to be right around 1.2 millimeters, 32.5 on the outer dimensions and 29 on the inner dimension. And it's about the same in both directions. You can see that mine does not have a protective cover over it, 
Um, that is an optional thing that will come in the final product. So if you've seen pictures of the final version, you'll see that on there. And that is something that you can use or you can take off. And then here is the camera. You can see it up close now. Uh, this is the other big news uh, in this announcement. And this camera is tiny. I'll get the weight in just a second, but look at that tiny lens. This lens was apparently designed for cell phones, which is why it's so small. And uh, Runcam has made this custom housing to be able to mount it just over the sensor. You can see this backboard is not quite square. It is 14 millimeters in one direction and 16 millimeters in the other direction. So that's just like the other HD Zero uh, Nano camera. Mine does not have a protective uh, plastic plate on the back. The final version might come with that, but you can obviously run it with or without depending on your preference. And the weight of this one comes in at just about 1.7 grams, which is even lighter than that custom one that I made. This camera does support 4x3 mode and 16x9, and I'll put some specs on the screen for you here, including the FOV uh, in both of those cases. Now, the FOV is not as wide as the custom camera that I built, although I like an insanely wide FOV for indoor whoop racing, uh, wider than some people would like, definitely wider than I would use for like an outdoor toothpick or something like that. So this is going to be kind of in between those, and we'll see how it does once I get it mounted up. So to find out how this really performs in practice, we're going to have to put it to the test. So I'm going to make a new build. I've got the beginning of it here. And then after I've got that built, I'm going to have to spend some quality time with it. I want to race around inside and outside and really get a feel for this camera and the performance. And so instead of waiting for that, I've decided I'm going to release this much of the video as is. I want to make sure this information gets out to you in a timely fashion. Sometimes when I wait to put it all in one video, then it just takes too long or sometimes just never even gets done. So I'm going to release this video as is, but if you want to see how this build turns out and my impressions on actually putting these into practice, then uh, make sure you're subscribed and, and come back. Also, I'm going to have to mount this, and it does have standard mounting holes, but the lens is really short, so a standard mount might not be the best thing. I'm going to try out some different options. I might even make a new 3D print for this. So yeah, if you want to see how that turns out, then check back here later. In the meantime, Nick Burns just released a video on this combination and he has a bunch of really good flight footage with this camera so you can see it in different lighting conditions. He did a really good job with that video so if you want to see that in the meantime I would recommend you to go check it out. I'll put a link to his video down in the description as well. I think it's really exciting to see all this development happening in HD Zero. I'm excited about this but I know the question a lot of you are asking is you know when can we buy it? When will this stuff actually be available and in stock? And obviously I can't make any promises about that, but I do have some information to share because I asked Carl from DVMath these questions. So first of all, for the VRX, this was originally going to ship out sooner, but it was delayed because they wanted to fix up some problems that were found in testing. So I'm glad they're doing that. The final version of this should ship out uh, first week of May, sometime between May 1st and May 8th is what he told me. And so that's coming up really soon. Um, you can already pre-order these and I'll put some links down in the video description. It'll look kind of like this, except it'll have a black case. And so if you want one of these, make sure you're pre-ordered. And then for these, these have already been manufactured in the first batch, but that first batch is being sent to other manufacturers who make bind and fly drones. So I think we can look forward to one or more bind and fly drones coming out on the market sometime soon. Be on the lookout for those. And then after that, the second batch of cameras and video transmitters will be available for general retail, and that should be late May. That's what I was told, so hopefully that's true. You may see pre-orders for these going up sometime in May as well, so be on the lookout for those, and when I see them, I'll put links down in the video description. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope this information is helpful for you. That's the whole reason I'm making this video after all. Uh, FPV is just my hobby. It's something that I enjoy, and this channel is just something that I do as my way of giving back to the community. So I'm glad that you're here and I hope that you'll stick around. It takes me a little while to finish my video project sometimes because it is very time consuming, but I do have some interesting stuff in the works to bring you in the future. So I hope you'll come back. If you want to hit the like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. But of course, no pressure there. And if you want to leave any comments down below, I'm pretty good at responding to those, especially if there's a question in there. So happy to talk to you down there. Hear what your thoughts are on all of this stuff on the open source announcement. Yeah, in fact, what would you like to see from the community? Like what would you hope that this would bring to uh, HD Zero in the future. I'd love to talk about that and more down in the comments section below. And until next time, I hope you guys 
Have a great week and stay flying.